it makes you think and come to your own conclusion about what you think about what happened. You know what I mean? And I like when a movie can do that where it's like, okay, don't don't try to, you know, put it in my face. This is what you're supposed to feel. It's like, no, this is the story. Take away with what you want to take away from it. Alright, y'all. So lately I've been on a mission to try to find these hidden black gems. These film, these black films that I've forgotten about, not talked about. So uh, if you go back on my channel a few weeks ago, I reviewed a movie called Nothing But a Man, which I really enjoyed. Then I found another one called a Spook that the Spook that sat by the door, which I really enjoyed. Um, then there was a Gordon Parks one, uh, the what was that shit called, The Learning Tree, which many people were a fan of, but I wasn't feeling it. You know, it wasn't the worst movie I've ever seen, but it didn't live up to the hype that uh, people made it out to be so i'm okay with that well, what's the next one that i can watch that uh that really people don't talk about you know because i i love the black exploitation era i'm a big fan of those movies but i said i want to find those hidden gems that weren't talked about like like the black exploitation movies were and i came across this one and i did hear about this when judas and the black messiah came out because this movie was compared to that film and i see why so this movie is called uptight this was made in 1968 uh, I forgot the director's name, I'm sorry, but um, it was uh, co-written by Ruby D, the legendary Ruby D, rest in peace, and starring Max Julian from the Mac, alright, and the mama from the Mac plays his mama in this movie, so this film takes place after the, assassina after the assassination of Dr. King, right, so Dr. Martin Luther the King just got assassinated, some sad shit, and now black folks are angry. You know, he was preaching that we shall overcome and I have a dream. Matter of fact, they played a snippet from the I have a dream speech. But at this point, black folks are saying we're, we're done with the I have a dream. Like, like, fuck the dream. OK, we're trying to get out of this nightmare and I'm going to have to grab me a gun to help me get up out that nightmare. Because obviously the dream ain't working. The marching ain't working. Y'all only answer to this. All right. So uh, Max Julian, who plays a, a character by the name of Johnny, Belongs to a group that's similar to the Black Panthers. They're getting ready for revolution. We're going to do this thing. And among them, another member, his name is Tank, who is semi-part of the group, but he's uh, he's a working class man. He just he works at a steel mill that he just got fired from uh, before beating up a white guy. <laughs> how, how ironic. Beats up a white guy, loses his job, and then he spirals out of control, goes into depression, becomes a bad alcoholic. Max Julian's character, uh, Johnny... Um, who's his best friend tries to get him out this rut be like look man put the bottle down come with us we're you know we're about to we're about to do this thing we want you to be a part of this dude wants no part of it he's a fuck up all right so johnny max julian he uh, goes on a mission to try to steal these guns gets caught up and now he's on the run from the law the cops are looking for him and the best friend tank knows where he is so tank now has a clear mind tries to get in with the with the fictional black panthers and they tell him no you're a fucker we don't want you here you're not welcome so he feels abandoned now by his own people he's down on his dick he just lost his job his lady can't be with them because she's on welfare so if they find out that she has a man they're gonna kick her off of welfare this he doesn't know what to do now so he comes across this uh flamboyant uh sellout black man who happens to be a homosexual he's a, a proud informant of the police and he tells him hey man there's a bounty on this guy's head. You know where he's at. Yo, make that money because they don't give a fuck about you. Your lady don't give a damn about you. Like, you have nothing to lose. Pretty much get this money. And that's what he does. He sells his own people out. He sells his man out to get the money. And then everything just goes downhill from there. So that that's all I'm going to give you. All right? I'm just trying. I'm, I'm giving you all that just to try to sell you on the movie. Because you're like, what's this movie about? I'm telling you what it's about. All right? So I'm giving you that to sell you on the film. This was... A dope film. This is a great film. This is one of those movies where afterwards, I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking to myself like, damn, because at first you're like, damn, fuck this guy, dude, fuck this dude, man. But then when the more I thought about it, I'm like, well, damn, was he really wrong? Like, who's really wrong here? Because there's a lot of hypocrisy. There's a lot of you know uh, righteous shit. But at the same time, who's really right though? You know, because um, uh, oh, actually, if you watch the Mac. Pretty Tony is also in this movie, right? So Pretty Tony is the leader of this Black Panther group. And I love this um, this dialogue back and forth that he has with this, uh, I guess he's like a Jesse Jackson type character who is not for the violence. He's all for the peaceful protests. And um, what's his name? Uh, oh, Lord. Uh, Pretty Tony is on the same shit that I'm on. Like, man, fuck a peaceful pro. Like, what a peaceful protest get anybody? All right. 
did, did, did white folks peacefully protest when they took this country? Hell no. Nah. So, you know, they had to grab a gun. Like, the only way they answer is if, if you grab a gun and protect yourself. I'm like, yeah. But then listen to the Reverend talk. I'm like, well, damn, he does make sense, too. So it's like you see the, the pros and cons on both sides. It's like, who's really wrong here? And even when it comes down to the character of Tank, the one that sold Max Julian out, this like, well, damn, you know, at first you hate him, but then you're like, you really can't blame him for what he did because, like, when you see how everything unfolds and see the shit that he goes from the shit that he faces, you're like, damn, I do kind of feel sorry for this guy. Was he really wrong in what he did? So it's one of those movies where they don't try to force you to feel anything. It makes you think and come to your own conclusion about what you think about what happened. You know what I mean? And I like when a movie can do that where it's like, okay, don't, don't try to, you know, put it in my face. This is what you're supposed to feel. It's like, no, this is the story. Take away with what you want to take away from it. And I dig shit like that. So if you have not seen this movie yet, check it out. It's on YouTube for free. It's like the other ones I reviewed. Solid film. Really dug it. Uh, I wish more people knew about it. And that's it. And that's all. As far as gripes go, of course, 1968. So, yes, the pacing is very slow. There's no musical score. So you might get bored. Of, I mean, to me, a musical score really elevates the film. So the fact this movie really had no score, I, I think the film kind of suffered because of that. But as far as... The cinematography, the acting, the, the writing, the script. Ruby D did a great job on the script. Dug this joint. Highly recommend watching it, okay? And I can see why because of the, the context, the, the subject that's about. It kind of got hidden because movies like this, movies like The Spook at the Door, I guess, you know, certain people felt that black people were going to feel empowered by it and, and somehow take over the world. You know, I don't know. <laughs> For some reason... They, they felt threatened by these movies, so they kind of swept them under the rug for them never to see them again. But thank God for YouTube, we got them. There's nothing you can do about it, all right? You may kill the revolutionary, but you can never kill the revolution. That's it, <laughs> and that's all. Have you seen Uptight? What you think about it? Comment freely below. Let me know what you thought. If you like and dig this content, hit the like and subscribe notification bell in the corner. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video.